Hello at Stanley Kids. Welcome back to class. I hope we had a nice time in our last class. Today, we are going to be looking at the generations of computers. In this class, we will look at the various generations of computers and also their limitations. The first generation of computer spans from 1940 to 1956. Now, this generation of computer uses what is called a vacuum tubes as circuitry and a magnetic drum as memory. Now, when we say the vacuum tube, the vacuum tube is a device that controls the electronic current flow in high vacuum. Because of the bulb of the vacuum tube, these computers were very, very slow and they consume a lot of heat. Now, these computers were very big computers. They can cover a very large room. They are not your personal computers. They are used in government organizations and big firms. Now, these computers were very, very expensive and very difficult to maintain. They use punched card as input device, as input, and also they use printout as output. Now this is the magnetic drum. The magnetic drum is what is used as memory at that time. Because of this, the first generation computers were not fast. Some of the limitations of the first generation of computers are that they are very slow, they are very big in size, and like I said, they are very expensive. They use punch card as input and print out as output, and also they produce a lot of heat. Now, example of this computer is the Univac and the ENIAC, which is Electronic Numeric Integrator and Calculator. And these are the first set of computers that were introduced. Now, the second generation computer brought about the removal of vacuum tubes and the replacement with transistors. Now, transistors were used in this second generation between 1956 to 1963. Transistors were smaller in size with silicon chips and they were faster than the first generation. Now, they also used punch cards as inputs and printed as output, but this set of computers became more faster and smaller compared to the first generation. This computer also produces heat, but not like the first generation computer. These computers were also not used in personal homes. They were also used in government establishments, but data were processed faster compared to the first generation computers. The third generation computers brought about integrated circuit which removed the transistors. Now, the third generation computers, punch cards were replaced with keyboard and monitors. As we can see, these generation computers were not like the first or the second generation. This third generation computer spans from 1964 to 1971. These generation computers were interactive because they have keyboard and they have monitors. They could see what they are typing. It also brought about operating systems. Applications were also used in these third generation computers. Well, we say it was interactive because with the keyboard and the, mon and the monitor, you, can, you could be able to type and see what you are doing. Now, the third generation computers were much faster and much cheaper compared to the first and the second generation. The integrated circuit brought about more tasks. The first generation computer could do only one task at a time, but in the third generation, more tasks were done. Now, the fourth generation spans from 1972 to 2010. This fourth generation brought about the microprocessor which were used to position all computer 
components like the CPU, the memory, the input and outputs. Now, if you can see in the picture, these fourth generation computers are even still in use in date. CPU we, we are introduced, which houses all other components of the computer. The fourth generation computer we are much faster and much more easier. This fourth generation computer also brought about the internet, brought about the birth and the evolution of the internet. The fourth generation computers were much more cheaper, which made us to start buying. The fourth generation computers brought about personal computers. It means that people now decided to start buying these computers in their home. Instead of going to big government firms to operate the computer, you can get one to, for yourself. They were portable, they were cheaper, and they were faster. The fifth generation computers, which is the generation that we are now, started in the year 2010 to date. Now, the fifth generation eradicated the microprocessor and brought about what is called the artificial intelligence, AI. And they are still, devel they are still in development to date. Now, in this generation computers, they even recognize voice recognition. Robotics were used in this generation that made it more easier and faster to use. Now, we have microchips now. That are even used in this fifth generation to make processing much more available and also rams we are also upgraded now i'm going to run through the generations of computer from the first to the fifth generation now the first generation like i said used vacuum tubes they were bigger they were slow they can consume a very large room they consume heat and also they are very expensive the second generation brought about the transistors that eradicated the first generation. Transistors were a bit more faster than the first generation and they were smaller compared to the first. Now the third generation brought about the integrated circuits which were used to interact with the computer. Punch cards were removed and keyboards and monitors were also introduced in the third generation. The fourth generation brought about the microprocessor, which made the computer much more smaller and faster. And these computers were also sold out to the public for personal use. The, third gener the fourth generation also brought about the internet. Now, the fifth generation, like I said, uses artificial intelligence that brought about robotics and job to be done in split seconds. I'm going to leave us with a, a short video clip that explains the generation of computer.
Now, I hope you have seen it all. We'll see in our next class. Thanks for watching. I am glad we enjoyed the class together. I hope to see you in our next class. Don't forget, coding is fun. Bye.